this festival is amazing. It, it, it has everything you'd want in a festival, minus a big ass lake that you can jump into. We played a show and now we're on a bus and we'll be home in 30 minutes. That's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's, you know, Tennessee, this is where we grew up. It's, you know, it's very, I guess, very familiar to us. It's got a, that's the great thing about Bonnaroo. It's got such a, uh, like a close-knit vibe. Like, you'll very seldom run into anyone here that hasn't been here for the last five or six years straight. Molly's Chambers are like the old fans, but, I mean, obviously, you, somebody, and Sex on Fire are probably the ones that get the most uh, rise out of people. But man, we played a new one last night, and it's kind of sing along -y, and they went nuts. So that's a, you know, that's a good thing. That's also another good thing about Bonnaroo, to, when you've got a record coming out, just kind of let them be a little guinea pigs, bounce it off of them, see what they're, what they're into. And we'll probably throw three or four new ones in there. It's, it's hard. You don't want to play at all, because you don't want everybody to have heard everything on the record. So we don't know what goes over the best. We just know what goes over the best out of the four that we've played. And afterwards, people are like, man, amazing show. Like, I love that you guys play new stuff. But when you do it, you feel really weird. It's like playing in Japan. They're very polite. And they, like, clap for, like, ten seconds, and they stop clapping completely. And it's like, yeah, totally. You hear crickets, and you, like, click off your tuner and start the next song. We love the Pixies. And Where's My Mind is, like... It, uh, arguably, you know, top ten songs ever for me. I like love that song. I, it like hit me in high school, and I never stopped listening to the Pixies after that. But that was the first song that really hit me. I think we had only played that song twice before, and had <laughs> so horribly both times that we were like, our last rehearsal, we were like, no way we're playing that song at Bonnaroo. Absolutely no way we're going to set ourselves up for disaster. It's such a such an iconic and great song. There's no way we want to be known as the band that mutilated, you know, <laughs> where is my mind? And then the next time we played it was last night in front of all those people. It's definitely a challenge playing a festival like this, and especially headlining, you've got a lot of weight on you. You've got to, not only do you want people to think it was an amazing show, but you want to be the best headliner. You want to be, if not the band, one of the bands that people walk away saying like, man, did you see that show? That was sick. So. That's the biggest challenge for us. Last night was truly, uh, definitely one of our proudest moments as a band, and you know what a great way to to kick off our uh, you know our summer than playing in our backyard. All of our friends, all of our family, everyone that was there six years ago when we played in the tent. Um, those are really the people that came up to me and just said how proud they were of us. We kind of stuck it out. And the bands that were playing six years ago when we were here, a lot of them don't even play music anymore. And the fact that we worked our way up to headline on a stage that the next night was gonna have Stevie Wonder on it. And, you know, it's just, it's pretty nuts. I don't want to be done with Bonnaroo. It's one of my favorite festivals. Um, I'll definitely be back. You know, whether or not I'm on stage, I'll definitely be back. Um, but I, you know, I don't think we're the kind of band that plays a show and thinks that we can't beat it next time. Hell, we might come back and do a version of the Flaming Lips, doing a version of the Side of the Moon. <laughs> From what I remember, there's been a lot of years in between there. <laughs> a lot of fun. But uh, I just remember being uber nervous. We played a tiny little tent at, at like noon or something. And that was when we, like Matthew and I were staying in a motel room together and stuff right up the road. And we'd take vans over, we took vans over and we were just like the kids at the, at, at the you know, at Bonnaroo. We were the youngest band there probably. I was just turned 16 or something. Man, it was great. We had played a ton of festivals in Europe and the UK before we had played any, uh, pretty much any shows in America, really. 
Um, so it was kind of like our first experience of an American, uh, an American festival, and it, it was kind of cool because it was so close to home that a lot of our friends and family got to come and hang out. We pretty much played our show, partied to the wee wee hours, and then went to the motel, slept for a couple hours, and started all over. It was amazing. It's like, uh, it's kind of like, like camp or something like that. You get to see all your friends who are in bands, and you, you meet up with everybody, and you all like party and eat together, and then you all go back to your buses at night. And I don't know. I, I never went to camp as a kid, but I thought that's you know like probably pretty comparable. I, I think the 2004 Wine Rouge performance was one of our great performances. I remember being like outside of the tent and hearing the people roar, and we all looked at each other like, holy sh you know, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, still to this day, every time we'll run into people all the time, like, man, that tranny at Bonnaroo in 04 was just blew my mind. And I actually got on YouTube and watched it before we came to Bonnaroo this year, because I knew we were putting it in the set just to see um, how hard we rocked back then. Playing Bonnaroo 2004, we weren't very good. Like literally, like we were not good players. So, what I did at least, I overcompensated with the way that I looked. So, like I would bang my head and like jump around, and, like think like if I do this enough, maybe they will not notice how bad I am playing. So now that I'm a better player and stuff, and I like you get less and less animated because you're concentrating on your harder parts that I'm writing. I used to be pretty intimidated. You know, I had to up a front because I was really insecure about what it was that we were doing and you know we were scratching our heads as, as to see whether or not we we could stick around and stick it out and and be here you know as long as we have and we had you know now that we have I think we're feeling better about it every day and more comfortable every day. It's really great to kind of track your career each time you play you're on a bigger stage, you know, the crowd gets bigger, they start reacting to, you know, certain songs. I mean, it's, last night I had so much fun looking out in the crowd at how many people actually like stuff from our first record. I guarantee you, when we played here in 2004, there was probably never a moment that there was a smile on my face. And the other night, I couldn't wipe a smile off my face. We knew we were wanting to stick around at Bonnaroo, so we, about three or four months ago, we went ahead and got a nice bus. The difference in the 15 passenger van and this bus here, oh man, I don't know, a ton of things. Flat screen TV, toilet, that isn't a five gallon bucket super glued to the back of the van. And now we're in bunch of buses. It's crazy what a few years can do. We don't really have anything to compare to because I've not been in another band. But I mean, I will say this. We've all been in fights together and we're all still together. And then there's other people who we got into fights with that we've never talked to again. So like if I was in another band, like there's a chance that I could get into a fight with somebody and never want to talk to them again, just, you know, bolt. Yeah, if we weren't brothers, I'm sure we would have broken up by now with the fights that we've been in. So I guess we got that going for us. We did the, um, we did this record in New York City. And uh, the first four we did, let's see, three and a half in LA, and then one, you know, one and a half or whatever in Nashville. Um, we just wanted to change the scenery, so none of us had ever lived in the city before. I mean, Caleb has a, his girl has a place there, so he's kind of back and forth, but I thought it'd be kind of neat just to, you know, walk to the studio every day or, you know, or your mat, pick a cab. So this record, we really, you know, went in there to just have fun and make the, make the music that we were inspired to make, and we finished it about six weeks ago. So it's being, um, I guess, mixed or mastered or something right now. But we're really stoked about it. Right now it's called Southbound, but we've now learned that there are 
a gazillion other bands that have songs named Southbound, so we're gonna have to change the name of it. But um, that was the act, actually the last song that we recorded for the record, and it's kind of neat because that was kind of our way of saying, yeah, we just spent six weeks in New York making this record, but guess what? You know, this is who we are. This is where we're from. This is the kind of people we are. So it was basically us bidding farewell to a New York City and thanking them for uh, loaning us their city for a few weeks. I mean, we had no idea that anybody would even really like it. We were just gonna put it on the record just because we could and you know we really had fun playing it but everybody that hears it now you know really well I mean last night these people were great they had never heard it before immediately it was like the whole crowd had already heard the song a million times and they were all right in it from the word go and I'm, I'm, after the show we all looked at each other like man that song was like it you know like it was written 50 years ago, and everyone was right there from from the beginning, and they were there till the end, and I don't know. And, and we knew when we recorded that record, we said that that song would go over well at Bonnery. We had a feeling about it. Uh, we didn't know it would go over as well as it did, but it, it was shocking. 